the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen.
and investigation. It requires wondering. I don't mean, when I say to love God with your mind, I don't mean gathering information about God. But finding joy in solving these puzzles, in contemplating on the strategies and the tactics of God and his plan of salvation. These four angles, now that we know what they are, the next thing is <clears throat> it's important for us to know ourselves. Who are we? Which angle appeals to our personality, to our psychological makeup better? Are we more inclined to be the emotional type or are we better able to engage with God through our soul or strength or mind? Once we know who we are, that is very critical. We must also know that not all of these four senses are equally strong. One will be stronger than the other. One will be more developed than the other. And it's okay, it's perfectly fine to lead with that one. The next step, it's also important to know the people that we serve. And I don't mean you have to be a priest or a Sunday school teacher, but if you have just one person who calls upon you for advice or mentorship, it's important to know what his angle is. Is he or she more the spiritual type, the emotional type, to engage with the, with the senses? Does he view acts of service as the language of love, or is he more the kind who wants to love God with his mind? And it's important not to enforce our own view on others. Sometimes, one time I was talking to um, the high school class and another um, person came to me afterwards, he says, you're just giving them information. It's, it's important that they read, that they fall in love with God with their heart. Actually, we were both right. Those who have this angle to love God with their heart, we must give them what nourishes that angle. But those who want to love God with their mind, that's perfectly fine. We should not suppress that. To love God with the mind is to investigate and to question and to engage on an analytical, if you are a thoughtful, analytical person, you like to calculate things. Maybe it's difficult for you to engage at the emotional level. Or maybe scenes in movies don't affect you that much. You know it's a movie, you know that these are actors and there are cameras and directors and you're not that type. What does it mean to love God with your mind? It means to let your mind sail on the sea of thoughts and solve these puzzles and, and wonder and ask. I want to conclude with an example. The lawyer began by asking Lord Christ, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The word inherit shows up a lot in Christian theology. The word inherit. So let's engage with God on the level of the mind. What do you think inherit means? To what is he referring? Because the Lord didn't correct him, didn't say, no, don't say inherit, say something else. He said, that's fine, he proceeded with the conversation. And many times in the Bible we are told that we are given an inheritance to inherit the kingdom 
of heaven. And by the way, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are two different things, but we'll save that for another time. But what does it mean to inherit? Let's think. Let's solve this. Inherit whom? We know inherit what? We want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, but inherit whom? The verb inherit means somebody has to die and I am the rightful heir of that person. So I inherit the kingdom of heaven which belongs to him or her. Who, who do I inherit? So now we're engaging on the level of the mind. If you find this intriguing, maybe you belong in that group. And if you get a question from somebody who looks to you for answers, don't say, oh, don't, don't worry about that, just pray. Wrong answer. He is thirsty or she is thirsty to engage on that level. The answer, I'll give you a hint. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the chapter about eternal life, he says, corruption cannot inherit incorruption. Doesn't he say that? La yarith al fasad That is the word inheritance again. So it's not just the lawyer, it's also St. Paul's understanding of the scripture. Origen, explaining the nature of man, said there is this duality that St. Paul refers to, that the body resists against the spirit, and the spirit resists against the body. So Origen explained it and said that there is two, that there is a duality. When God created Adam, actually he created two men. This is just him contemplation. First, he created the carnal man, the physical man, the materialistic man, and then he breathed on him, and Adam became a living soul. So he created the spiritual man that lives inside the carnal man. The kingdom of heaven belongs to the first. And we gain this right through baptism and through the holy sacraments. But corruption cannot inherit incorruption. So the physical or the carnal man must die so the spiritual man can inherit him because he is the only true heir. The spiritual side of us is the only true heir of the carnal side of us. And this is what is meant by inherit. We actually inherit ourselves. But the physical version of ourself, that must pass so that the spiritual version can inherit that which belongs to the physical version. This is just an example of loving God with all your mind. You wonder about these things. It's not a matter of collecting information, but it's a matter of asking and wondering and if this is the side that appeals to you, it's perfectly fine to lead with that side, you leave with any side that appeals to you and it will bring the other three along. And that's the whole point. May God give us the wisdom and the courage and the strength to love him with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and all our mind.